With the sudden closure of the Nintendo 3DS eShop, I can't think of a better time to get into the world of 3DS Homebrew. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install custom firmware on your Nintendo 3DS. Now before we dive in, I just want to mention that this tutorial is for educational purposes only. Anyways, I'm Anton, and let's get started. First things first, you'll need a device that can read and write to an SD card. You can use a PC, Mac, Chromebook, or even a mobile device, as long as it has a file manager and internet browser. As no applications are needed apart from the optional FAT32 format for Windows, this tutorial will work with all Nintendo 3DS systems, including the new 3DS and 2DS series, regardless of region or firmware. For this tutorial, I'll be using my new Nintendo 3DS XL, and I recommend getting one of the new systems as some applications and games will run better. If your system is modded, or you think it is, I recommend not proceeding with this tutorial, as your system may get bricked. An easy way to check if your system is modded is to hold the select button while pressing the power button. If you don't see the screen, you're good to go. Now, I'm not responsible for anything that were to go wrong while following this tutorial, but if you follow it carefully, you should have no issues, as bricking a 3DS seems to be a rare occurrence nowadays. If you have any digitally purchased titles, they will not be affected. Just be cautious when playing online on Nintendo servers, as cheating can get you banned. Every Nintendo 3DS system includes an SD card, either 2 or 4 gigabytes. You can use this one to install the custom firmware, but I would highly recommend getting a larger one, so you can do way more and don't have to worry about upgrading. I picked up a SanDisk 128GB SD card, and it has been working wonderfully. You can go larger, but 128GB seems like the most practical, and they are pretty affordable too. Make sure you buy a notable SD card brand, and that it has a fast read speed such as 120MB per second. As loading times may take a while if it's too slow and may even lead to some crashes, so don't cheap out on an SD card, as it will make your modding experience way better and will be worth it in the long run. Also, make sure that you are using the correct SD card type for your system, whether that's a standard or micro SD card, and be sure to have an adapter if you're planning to use a micro SD card for the older 3DS systems. Next, make sure that your system is updated. Head to System Settings, and of course to do this, you'll need to be connected to the internet and the firmware version should be listed on the top screen. To update, select Other Settings, and then move right four times. And select System Update. Press OK. Then press I Accept on the Terms and Agreement screen. Press OK. And now it will update. Press OK once finished. It should be at 11.16.0-49, but if it has been updated past this, check the pinned comment or the description to see if this tutorial is still relevant. Now, if you're using the SD card that came with your Nintendo 3DS, you can skip this section, but if you're upgrading to a larger one, please follow it as we are going to be backing up all the files. But you don't need to if you don't care about the data on your old SD card and want to start fresh. Alright, so now it's time to remove the backplate on my new Nintendo 3DS XL. And remove the micro SD card. Depending on the type of 3DS you have, it may be easier to access. Next, I'm going to plug it into my adapter and then straight into my PC. Once it's open, you'll see a Nintendo 3DS folder, but you may even see a DCIM folder if you've taken any pictures. Now create a folder and name it something that you'll remember. I'll call mine 3DS Backup. Now just simply drag and drop the folders into your folder. Now eject your stock SD card and insert the one you're going to be upgrading to. Now, the SD card needs to be formatted to FAT32 for the 3DS to read it. If it is XFAT or anything else, it will not work. So for Windows, we are going to use FAT32 format, which you can find on my website in the description. So simply select what drive it is, based on its letter, and then press Start. Make sure you have the correct letter selected, as formatting a drive will erase all data from it, so be careful as you probably don't want to erase your entire computer's hard drive. I also recommend closing all windows to avoid any potential errors. Now if you are on Mac, you should be able to format it using Disk Utility. Now just simply drag and drop your backup Nintendo 3DS folder into your new SD card, and everything should be copied over. Once it's finished, close the program, and now our SD card is ready to go. If you are using the SD card included with your system, just connect it to your PC, and if you follow the upgrade process, your upgraded SD card should now be in your PC. So head down to the description and go to the Homebrew 3DS page on the Anton Retro website. So click download and then click on one of the links, as there are multiple alternatives. This will bring you to a download page, and all you have to do is press download. This will download the Anton Retro 3DS Boot 9 Strap 2023 package, which will include everything you need and does not contain any copyrighted files. Once it's complete, extract the folder using whatever program you prefer. Once everything is extracted, go ahead and drag and drop all the files onto your SD card. 
It should now look something like this. So go into the Nintendo 3DS folder, and you should see a single folder with a long name of characters. This is an ID code that gets assigned to every Nintendo 3DS SD card. Right click on it, and then select Properties. Now highlight the ID, and copy it. Now we're going to paste the ID somewhere, so we can use it for later. If you happen to see two folders with long IDs, just rename your Nintendo 3DS folder to Old, then place your SD card back in your 3DS. Turn on your system, and let it create the essential files. Turn your system off, and then insert your SD card into your PC. Now open the brand new Nintendo 3DS folder. Copy the newly generated ID folder name. Now we're going to paste the ID somewhere, so we can use it for later. Then delete the newly created Nintendo 3DS folder. Now rename the old folder back to Nintendo 3DS. This will leave all your games and save data exactly how they were with no redownload required, and now you should have your ID0 code. Great, so go ahead and eject your SD card from your PC and insert it into your system. Power it on. Once everything is recognized, go into your friends list. If you don't have a me, it will prompt you to create one. I don't have one on this system, so just create one from a photo. And oh, yeah, that's cursed. Once the Mii has been created, go back into the friends list. Go through the prompts, and once finished you should be assigned a friend code. Now return to your PC, and we are going to open the Brute Force movable website, which you can find on the Anton Retro site, and simply just enter in your friend code in the blank space. Remember that long ID we saved earlier? We'll just go ahead and copy and paste it into the second blank space. Once you've done that for both the friend code and ID 0, just go ahead and press go. After a little while, it will give you a 3DS friend code. Return to your 3DS system and select the orange smile in the top right corner, and then press internet. Now, just input the friend code. The account may already be named, but if it asks you to name it, just call it whatever you want. And, oh, that's a lot more cursed than mine. Once the friend has been registered, return your attention to the Brute Force mobile website, and it should take a little while to continue. Now, if you are enjoying this video so far, be sure to subscribe and leave a like, as it will help this video reach others and allows me to keep creating content, so I'd really appreciate it. Once it has been completed, it should now present you with a file titled movable.sed. It's completely safe, so download it onto your computer. Now that we have this file, open up the Banner Bomb 3 Exploit Injector site, which you can find on the Anton Retro site. Now we are going to upload our movable.sed file, officially obtained from the Brute Force movable website. Once it's uploaded, press Build and Download. This will download a completely safe zip folder. Extract it, and you should see two files called f00d43d5.bin and bb3.bin. So we're going to copy the bb3.bin file over to the root of our SD card. And then we're going to head into the Nintendo 3DS folder. Click on the long ID folder from earlier, and you'll see a similarly titled folder. Click on it, and you'll see a few more folders. And now we're going to create a folder and name it Nintendo DSiWare. Make sure the N, D, S, and W are all uppercase as seen here. If you happen to have the Nintendo DSiWare folder already, you don't need to create it. Double check everything, and then place the F00D43D5.bin file into the Nintendo DSiWare folder. Once you've done that, go ahead and eject the SD card and insert it into your system. Now power it on. Once you're on the menu, launch system settings. Select Data Management, and then go to DSiWare. Select the SD card tab. You should now be at the Bannerball multi hex menu and press the A button on Install Unsafe Mode. Your system should now automatically power off. When it is in this state, press the left shoulder and right shoulder triggers, D-pad up, and the A button. Then while holding these, press the power button. Keep holding these buttons until the device reboots into safe mode. If it boots into the home menu, just shut down and try again. While in safe mode, press OK. Then press I accept on the Terms and Agreements screen. Press OK. Now this update will fail, and don't worry as this is intentional. Press OK on the error screen, and when it asks you if you'd like to configure your internet settings, press Yes. On the Connection Settings menu, press Connection 1, and then press Change Settings. 
Now press the right arrow once and select Proxy Settings. Press Detailed Setup. If everything was successful, your 3DS should now boot into the safe B9S installer. If you're using the SD card that is included with the system, you may not see the screen. If so, you may need to get another SD card like the one I'm using. When prompted, input the given key combination on the top screen. Boot 9 Strap will now be installed. Once completed, press A to reboot your system. Now it should boot into the Luma configuration screen. Press the start button to save and restart the system. Your system should now boot into Luma 3DS, the custom version of the home menu which does not look any different from the official one. We're almost done, but we need to finalize a few things, set up homebrew applications, and make system file backups. Go into system settings. Data management, DSiWare, and the SD card tab once again. Using the D-pad, navigate to uninstall safe mode and press A. Your system should automatically reboot. And once it has, powered off. So now we'll need to go back onto our PC and insert our SD card. Go to the Nintendo 3DS folder, the Long ID folders, and then the Nintendo DS Hour folder. Here you'll see the F00D43D5.bin file we placed earlier, and we're just going to delete it, as it will not be needed anymore. Now eject your SD card and insert it into your system. Power it on, and once it's rebooted, open Download Play. Once loaded, press the left shoulder trigger, D-pad down, and select all at the same time. The Rosalina menu should now appear. Now scroll down to miscellaneous options, press A, and press the A button on Switch the HP title to the current app. Press B to continue, and press B twice again to exit the menu. Press the home button and exit Download Play. Once the software is closed, relaunch Download Play. And you should now be in the homebrew launcher. Once loaded, press left shoulder trigger, D-pad down and select all at the same time to reopen the Rosalina menu. Now go to miscellaneous options and scroll down to dump DSP firmware. Press A to select it and then press B. Now scroll up to nullify user time offset. Press A to select it and then press B again to exit. Once we're back into the homebrew launcher, launch FBI. Navigate to SD. Then CIAs. Select current directory. Select install and delete all CIAs. Press A to confirm. These are all the applications that will be installed onto your home menu. I'll give you a tour of them towards the end of the video, so stick around. Once they're installed, press any button to continue. Press the home button and close download play. You can open up all the present boxes if you want. Now we're going to power down our device. Once it's shut off, hold start while pressing the power button. This will launch God Mode 9. If it asks you to create an Essential Files Backup, press A and then press A again once it has been completed. If you are prompted to set the RTC date and time, press A and set the date and time. Once you're finished, press A to continue. You should now be at the God Mode 9 main menu. Now press the home button to reveal the action menu. Select Scripts, and then select GM9 Megascript. Select Scripts from Playlex Guide. Then select Setup Luma 3DS to CTR NAND. And press A to continue. Now press A again to unlock writing permissions to SysNAND. Then input the provided key combination. Once everything is successfully copied, press A. Next, scroll down to Clean Up SD Card and press A. Press A to continue. Once everything's cleaned up, press A once again, and then press B to return to the main menu. Now we're going to back up our system's NAND. This isn't necessary, but I strongly recommend it, as it can allow you to restore your system in case it gets bricked. So select Backup Options, then choose SysNAND Backup. It will then ask you to proceed. Press A. Make sure you have at least 1.3GB of free space on your SD card, or else you will receive an error. The backup process will take a while. Press A when it's completed. Press B, then press B again to exit the main God Mode 9 menu. If it asks you to relock write permissions, press A for yes. Turn your attention to the top screen and scroll down to S Sys NAND Virtual. Press A. Scroll down to the essential EXEFS file and press A. Scroll down to the copy to 0 GM9 out option and press A. If you see destination already exists, scroll down and press A on overwrite files. Press A again to continue. Press the home button to bring up the action menu and select Power Off System to power it off. 
Our NAND is now successfully exported. Insert your SD card back into your PC and navigate to the GM9 folder. Go to the Out folder, and you should see a bunch of files. Now create a folder on your PC and drag and drop all the files onto it. Make sure you name it something that you'll remember. It is also recommended to save these files to multiple locations just in case. Now we can delete the sysnan.bin and the sysnan.bin.shop files on our SD card. Now eject your SD card from your PC and insert it into your system. And congratulations, your Nintendo 3DS is fully modded. You can now explore the world of 3DS Homebrew. Now let's take a look at all the applications that the package provides. First up is an enemy, which is the theme loader that can allow you to load up themes, including custom ones. Check out the theme plaza to view, download, and even upload your own. I got this legendary Among Us theme. Next, we have Checkpoint, which is a save game manager. It allows you to make backups of your save data, and you can also load up cheats. Just don't use them online. Next, you've got the Homebrew Launcher, which allows us to launch Homebrew software, including .3dsx files that do not appear on the 3ds home menu. The Universal Updater at first glance may seem like some random configuration software, but upon closer inspection, it's actually a Homebrew store that allows you to install and update Homebrew applications. There are many cool ones to check out, so I recommend exploring them. Next, we've got the Aid Shop, which includes Homebrew applications not found on the Universal Updater. Next, we've got FBI, which is an open source title manager for the 3DS and it even allows you to scan QR codes. And finally, we have God Mode 9, which is a complete file manager. Not only can it back up your system's NAND, but you can also back up your physical collection. Anyways, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, consider leaving a like and subscribing to see more heading your way. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below, and you can also check out the Discord server. And with that, I will see you all in the next one.